cardiovascular or is your brother? I'm sorry, I was sneezing. I, I just said, what was it? All governments are present in this city. Oh, yeah. I can see that. You think so? There's one that's hiding out. Well, are, uh, maybe are there any places in the present that are being governed properly that you can say they're being governed, or are they all sick? Well, you might say they're all sick, but I think we need to appreciate nuances. Like, it, like, like in America, like the idea of, of uh, democracy and human rights, you know, and free speech, I think insofar as free speech plays a governing role in the world, it's one of the most innovative and progressive things that is good for humanity that has ever been in the political arena. So I think ISIS is far worse governed than our system is, and whatever fault that uh, all of us are a part of. Yeah, it's just like that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm all for ideals and so bringing the, ideals into the political arena, but uh, you still got to deal with the president. So, as opposed to having a captain with the goal and and the purpose for the the advantage of all, including the cargo. Oh, we got a what, captain, what, Obama. What would you? What? What? How is your view of government different from what I suggested? I would say that my view of government is different than what you suggested. That how do you proceed? How are you choosing to proceed? I'm not clear in it. How am I choosing to proceed in the political group that I? No, you say that instead of having a goal or a purpose for government, mm -hmm. you have to <clears> address <throat> the many um, uh, manifestations in the world, as as it the the Near East and, and oh, yeah. ISIS and migration and, and the Republicans in this country and the Republicans in this country. How would you do that, other than with a big bulldozer? I've seen big ones, but how else? I mean, how how do you? How, how are you, I'm, I'm curious how you're engaging this problem without having um, a, a vision of the whole. Well, I'm, I'm kind of like an armchair general, you know, I offer my opinions when I have the opportunity or feel inspired to do so and Using that image, pay what, attention. what kind of siege are you suffering right now? Is it from all sides and all directions? Well, I'm not, I, I, I'm not sure about any siege, mm -hmm. but I took myself out of a political group because I don't like being treated badly. So, okay, well, I, I'm done. I was just curious. Okay. But you you asked for clarity, and I did the best I could. I would like to see you continue, but I was just curious. I, Here, I'd rather talk about geometry. Look, look her. <laughs> Me too. <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> Should the first question of politics be whether or not man can be governable? Okay, I'll go for that. Is that the first question? Sure. Oh. <clears throat> Is that, however, a, a mistake? Or is it possible to ask what segment of the population can be governed and what segment of the population cannot be governed? Yeah, that's and then good. what do you do with the part that can't be governed? Like the Tea Party Republicans. Is that right? Yeah, they can't be governed. Oh, well, what is the nature of the part that cannot be governed that you are now interested in exploring? Well, we reflected that earlier, the fundament what? fundamentalists, people that won't give up the idea that they're right and everybody else is wrong that disagrees with them. <clears throat> look, look here. <clears throat> what percentage of the world's population falls into that category? 40%. How many? 40%, I'd say, to speculate. Say, have you ever taught Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> what would you do with a class that had 40% of the students that were not teachable? Could you teach the 60% when 40% of the class is unteachable? Probably not, no. Well, then man as a whole is not governable, only a part. Is that right? Okay. Mm. In so far as unteachable because of their beliefs, yes. Oh. <laughs> then, if you're interested in politics, what group do you want to discover and understand? The part that's governable or the part that is not? Not, I wouldn't want to misunderstand any of them. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> but what group is the group that makes it difficult, if not impossible, to govern? The, the governable the or the ungovernable? Yeah, ungovernable. Oh. Oh. 
and you can now scan the whole world population and you can see this 40% wherever you go. Is that correct? Yeah. That's Schumann. In various forms, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what happens when the 40% gain control of a society? They, they tyrannize it. What? They tyrannize it. The tyranny? Yeah. Well, then the real problem <laughs> of politics. Go ahead. Is the ungovernables taking power? Because the ungovernable, the ungovernable <laughs> have power, and when they gain power in a political system, they introduce tyranny. Yeah. Oh, does that mean that they're now governable? No, they're now in control. Oh. Because many societies appear to be governable within tyrannies, last for many years, function in certain ways. But you don't want to call them... Ideal. Uh, not even ideal, or just but govern real. They are not governing states. Rather than that, they're anti. Is that right? <clears throat> hmm. Well, then I guess you want to study the nature of tyranny. I've been studying. That. What? What? I've been studying the nature of tyranny. You have been. Yeah. <laughs> and as far as interests goes, it's you know. It's okay. You know, it's a good adrenaline game, you know, but uh, there's higher things to study. Well, look here. <clears throat> Why do you think it's important to have a governable state? Because I'd like to understand that first. Um. Well, it seems that we're using this idea of governable in an ideal way, and so it would bring about things like justice, peace, and happiness in the body politic between the citizens of a just society. Then you think a governable state will be able to induce these great virtues by some invisible hand being able to bring about justice. Well, by rational governance. Yeah. yeah. Well then, <clears throat> now that we're going to set up a hospital for the failing states, <coughs> right? The International Hospital for the Cure of Tyranny. <laughs> right? Well, come on, come up with a Sounds curriculum. Nice. Come up with a, come on. How would you approach it? Come up with a curriculum? You have a website. Uh, Don't you want to do this right? <laughs> I'll do it right. <laughs> because, well, the, you come know, on, the problem now. with the Republic, that the ideal, Go ahead. they never have a way to get to the ideal state. There's only, you already fell out of it. The Timocratic man's already out. <laughs> there he wasn't said, a, he's saying it's impossible. I didn't. Well, well then you want to find out that, what, what I... is it about that he thinks that it's impossible, don't you? Sure. Well, ask him. Why is it impossible? <laughs> I don't know why. Oh. You're saying that's what Plato said. I, that, that's, I did say that. You can't move why? the Timocratic man into the aristocratic man. Well, it might happen somehow, but it's sure not in, in there. Perhaps. The Timocratic man has come in born that way and he can't change because that's his fate, as it says in the myth of Ur. Philosophers need to be born philosophers. You can't teach someone who's not born to be a philosopher. Well, there goes our hospital. <laughs> <laughs> right? <clears throat> Look here. Would you agree, if you're going to have a governable state, you want to select a group of candidates that are capable of governing? Yeah. Right? Right. Would you not agree the Republican Party has put forward 
a set of candidates that in principle are incapable of governing. <laughs> they're all clowns. Everybody knows they're all clowns. Well, worse. Yeah. We're in a democracy, right? You think democracy is so great that it can handle <laughs> the problem of forces against itself. It has to, yeah. It has to allow that plurality of voices, free speech, their but, position, uh, yeah. Must democracy allow within itself the opposition to destroy itself? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, that's the idea of freedom that it puts forward is that, hey, look, if you, if you believe something, even if it's destructive to us, you're allowed to believe it. We can't tyrannize you for what you mm -hmm. think. We can't well, vanquish you. Then democracy is incapable of saving itself when an anti democratic force sees its power and bring it, brings about its own eclipse. Is that right? I'm not no under the banner of freedom. I don't think that because as long as they remain the forty percent, then the sixty can mm -hmm. marginalize that vicious oh. part of itself. See, we have forty percent of Americans who don't vote. Mm. They're not participating in the game. Yeah. We have a couple of clearly irrational people running for for presidency. One, by the way, three of them. From what I've read. Let me give you a hand here. Hold on. That they have a great plan. One of them is death to all homosexuals. That's a good one. Shoot all left. Right. And no one is upset by that. Right, is that right? Three presidential candidates going for office have declared in public death to homosexuals. Who said, who, who are they? Trump. Right, they're not only going to cut their balls off, they're going to cut their head off. <laughs> right? Yeah, my vote. By the way, is this any different than the, than the terrorists in Islam? It's the same spirit, isn't it? So we become terror. We become a terrorist society potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Why do we allow them up there to run? And we allow them the freedom to destroy ourselves. Yeah. That's called freedom. That's democracy. Not great. Right. That's not democracy. By the way, Everybody's when you're That's teaching, a when you're teaching, and forty percent of your class are unteachable. What if they want to take over the class? Wouldn't you allow them? <laughs> no, I had a situation like that the other day, and I had to start writing multiple referrals. I had to crack down. It didn't allow me to teach. I didn't, per se, get control of the class, but I was handing out consequences, which some of them didn't like, which is nice. Are we not facing, in all concreteness, an irrational form of government breathing down our neck. What? What do you think? I'm sorry, I was not sure. Okay. It looks like they're not going to win, though. I mean, it looks like it looks like, given what's happening with that party, there's no way they're going to get the presidency. Well, except if only 40 percent. See, 158 families in the United States are said to be the the money behind the Republican Party in their present direction, and they're funding these people, yeah. right? But 158 people have the power to control the Republican Party, and with their wisdom, yeah. they have this great plan. Hmm. Yeah, but did you? Yeah, hear? but we should allow it, should we not? Because <laughs> one thing you have to respect in a democracy is the wealthy, yeah. <laughs> right? Yes. Um, yeah. Right. No. Right. Uh, pe people should be able to build the greatest private wealth with impunity. Right. With the appearance of a democracy. No. What do you mean, no? It. Well, obviously, the consequences are so horrific, as we know, that 
we wouldn't want that to be a principle that we should allow the riches to become the rich people to become as rich as possible. That's a bad principle. Are, are you assuming that of 158 of the wealthiest families want to back irrational candidates, they themselves are crazy? Yes. I wasn't, but I will agree with that. Then there are 158 <laughs> families that need psychotherapy. Yes. <laughs> right? That's the way we treat the tyrannical. So it's about time we got them involved in Rhonda's program. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, right? Yeah, You'll start a hospital for the wealthy. <laughs> They're, they're all going to be outpatients, aren't they? Right. We'll distribute it for you. Come in here. I was thinking we could help by taking their money away and redistributing it. That's too much of a fantasy, though. They do need treatment. But, but as a government, we're, we should allow this, should we not? Because freedom is the, uh, the absolute test of freedom is you want the person with the potential to destroy yourself to destroy yourself. That's giving them the right I don't think so. to have freedom, is it? Yes, right? Yes, that's it. <laughs> right. Let them apply right. all over. Right? Allow people to have the guns they need to kill themselves and others at random because that's freedom. Well, I wonder the, if he's still holding his same position. Well, I just, I think, what's your, what's the alternative? You wanna, are we gonna go get into involved in a civil war with the rich and their backers? Is that, do we want to call that? For, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna kill out, kill off all the opposition, and then we've got democracy. Is that, is that how we? Look, then don't, we got freedom. Don't look to me for a solution before we understand the problem. Or do you think we fully, we've understood it? Uh, not per se, I don't know. If you can raise any, if you were, were missing, If you uh, were, uh, hey, questions. assuming you are a Democrat or something like that, yeah. and are Democrat. in power, and you know that there are 158 families that by definition of our, cons as we consider it, they're irrational, uh, would you recommend they get into uh, Obama health plan for psychiatric help? <laughs> that's why he made it. Sure. Right. What an sure, and you know there are there um, are yeah. there I are mean, really there are people in politics and candidates that are interested in uh, reducing the amount of influence that the rich have. You know, like getting rid of super PACs, for instance. Bernie Sanders wants to get rid of super PACs. Well, now look here. The Bahamas and Bahamas. Switzerland have the right to hoard the wealth of the wealthiest. <laughs> right? <coughs> and it doesn't make any difference, does it? No, it makes a difference. I mean, a person's private fortune is their own business, and it has nothing to do with society and its implications. So. Would you not allow them the freedom to continue hoarding no. wealth? No. What? <laughs> Are you going to steal from the wealthy to pay the poor? Sure. Are I'd you a it. Robin Hood now, suddenly? <laughs> what? I would. But what happens to your principles? Remember the one you had before, allow the freedom? Oh, I don't, I don't think freedom. You, oh, oh. I don't think freedom should be considered in that kind of economic you should be able to hold on to whatever it is that you can get through the system. You should be able to hold on to whatever you have and, and can because get. that's freedom. And can get. Yeah, that, that's, that is an idea of freedom. That's like a libertarian idea of freedom, but uh, not mine. Now, uh, what's wrong with it? Um, what it, does it violate? Well, it, it doesn't help out the people who need help. What, what? It doesn't help out the people that need help. <laughs> but it appears they need help. <coughs> no, no, the doomed. The, it doesn't help out, you know, the poor. And uh, Why? Look here. What is this business of worrying about the poor? <laughs> they don't vote. Yeah, but they're people. They're people and... So what? So are the wealthy. Allow them to live in luxury. <laughs> right? <coughs> Come on, you got a good website, right? Political 
vision. That's a Facebook discussion group. No, no, come on, right? These are the issues, aren't they? Aren't they? Well, I, you know, I always ask Robin. You know. I like what you say about the money. So the money. Money is a medium of exchange, and people are hoarding it, and they're, they're, uh, it's not in circulation. It's like they're building a dam. And in order for us to have a prosperous society, you have to keep the money in circulation. You just can't hoard it. Like, you know, they, they should tax the super wealthy. They used to. At like a, look, 50% or something. Before 71. Yeah, I mean, in, that, in FDR's time, it was up to 90%. Yeah, before 1971, the tax structure was different. Wealthy did pay a big portion of it. Now they pay like 1%, and the poor people pay more. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Come on, deal with it. Well, those kinds of things, all you have to do is change the laws, right? Yeah. 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 All you have to do is change the law. Right, right. If you have enough money, so you they, the law, they you control the laws. Yeah. <laughs> See, the primary sickness you're dealing with is people who think they know. It's a belief, you know, and you can't, if you have a person who thinks he knows, he doesn't think he has a problem. And you can't send them to therapy or do anything else because they don't think they have a problem. Therefore, you're not going to convince them of anything. I mean, that's... It is a belief, too. It's okay, send him an email. It's Go ahead. It's a send him an email. Go ahead. In, uh, libertarianism. That's He's got that website. It's a, it's a total religion. It's 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 very it's very uh, much a religion. Well, but even when even when even when people have what I would think of as a correct belief, they don't do anything about it. I just heard on KPFK this morning that you know, first of all, Ben Carson's up there saying Obamacare is the worst thing that ever happened to this country, right? What an idiot. He's an MD, right? On the other hand, 60% yeah. of MDs in the country, when asked, will say that single payer is definitely the way to go, and, and even a higher percentage of nurses. The vast majority of the medical profession says, look, you can't get medicine done, at least as they know it, without a single payer system. So the whole way the United States is running with its medical care system is messed up, according to doctors and nurses, the vast majority of them, right? But they don't do anything about it. They don't stand up. They don't say, hey. Come on, so even when they have come. a good opinion, they still good. The majority does nothing about it. Good. He'll he'll answer you. Go ahead. Come on. Here uh, comes an email. Yeah. Come on. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what you, in what way do you agree? Come on. Well, that uh, people don't act in the system even if they have a good idea. I mean, what? What? People don't act. In within the system, the system, even if they have a good idea, and therefore they're ungovernable, <laughs> or lazy, yeah. or 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 cowards. If people don't act on what they think, then why think? Only the only ones who take action are the ones who don't think at all, and that's gruesome, you know. <laughs> Come on, I'm trying to get you back on the computer. <laughs> Come on, he's our political analyst. He's got that great website. Go ahead, look, look. It seems like the, the wealthy people that do take action without thinking is almost the same as the poor or the uneducated people that is complaining about being poor, but they don't take action either. So it's almost like opposite. You know, one taking action and then controlling the system, whereas one's complaining and seeing the, the problem, but don't take any action either. I'll get you an answer. Go ahead. <laughs> so, Come on, seriously. Know, Come on, I you're taking a gone a great role. <laughs> well, now they, play they, it. Come on. Yeah. And by the way, if anyone wants to help him and his 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 uh, website. Come to his aid. Right. Okay. Go ahead. Answer. So would they both need therapy then, in a way? You know, the, the rich needs psychotherapy on uh, what what is ethical and moral, and the poor needs how to uh, process the legal system or the, I don't know, the, their, their duty as a citizen. To, there, go ahead. Send him an email. Uh, well, I think philosophical midwifery would be better than psychotherapy, number one. Number two, I think, as far as solutions are concerned, somehow we have to bring platonic principles into the political arena and popularize them. See, what's it really? 
What's the difference between psychotherapy and midwifery? One, one fundamental issue. So, to play the game of philosophical midwifery, you have to come in and recognize you have a problem and to willing to talk about it and be able to demonstrate its existence in some contemporary scene in your life. In psychotherapy, that is not a requirement because all you need is some pre prevalent state called anxiety and that allows you access to therapy. You don't have to admit you have a problem, etc. So it's not, it's, it's not the kind of thing that is universally prescribable. Hmm. Right? It's only for a small group of people. It seems based around in both parties, though, uh, of why initially they're not, they don't have a meaningful goal. Right? Pardon me. Both parties, like, it, it seems like... Uh, helping out, helping uh, out the problem. Well, all you're doing is making it more difficult. I am. <laughs> By saying, also, its real expression presupposes you have a meaningful goal. But what if 40% of our population don't believe in meaningful goals? Well, we need or to more. Why, why that is the case. Why they don't, yeah. or, uh, well, why they aren't after their meaningful goal. Good, good, Ooh. good, good, go ahead. Wait, Bernie Sanders wants to make education free in this country. Right. Right. Obama wants to make health care affordable for everybody. That's not meaningful? I'm not sure what you mean by the Democrats don't have a meaningful goal. How many people do you know that have a meaningful goal or Huh? How many people do you know outside of Whoa. philosophy groups have meaningful goals? Seems like mm -hmm. the majority of human kind doesn't have a meaningful goal. Both parties, right? The the rich and the poor. Look here. And in between, <laughs> for that matter. Go ahead. Uh, well, I mean, I understand what you're saying, you know, that but for me making life easier for the poor is meaningful fundamentally like That's a we, we're subject. not going to say it's not That's a it's not the idea of the good it's not getting a light and it's not the most brilliant light of being it's not that kind of goal but socially speaking it is meaningful yeah physically speaking socially but, but that's isn't that a separate issue well we're talking about the parties we're talking about politics what do you mean a separate issue we're talking about right um well i'm presenting that that the reason, uh, the problem is, is they don't have a meaningful goal. If they did have a meaningful goal, what would surface? See, to, to deal with it, look here. <clears throat> what are you going to do with the segment of the population that does not and <laughs> refuses to consider the possibility even of a meaningful goal? Now, what are you going to do with them? If we're, hey, House arrest. Uh, come, on. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, in their house, you know, you give them Wrist some. And... Give them the Wi-Fi, you know. And... Good. Then we <laughs> should, one way or the other, in Carson, uh, you know, find a way to jail ninety percent of the population. Forty <laughs> percent. That's rather easy because we can build prisons. That's our. That's one of the America's great virtues. We can build more prisons than anything else. <laughs> right? And if you make them like five star hotels, they, people wouldn't know they're in jail anyhow. See? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right? So we're back to my civil and, war idea. And you my colleague's right? vote here is to feed the poor. That's a meaningful goal. Socially, physically, yes. Right? That's, Give them a, that's what he calls a meaningful goal. No? No, I think that, that everyone's uh, responsible for, uh, <clears throat> for that uh, attempt. To feed themselves. No, to have a meaningful goal and go after it. <coughs> mm. <clears throat> then what are you going to do with the people who never pursue meaningful goals, well, then, but yet have great power? Would you not agree? Greed, greed is a driving force for wealth. Would you call that a meaningful goal? No. 
Well, what are you going to do with the wealthy? We're going to lock and them up and stick them with pins and make them talk about how they got to that <laughs> Stick them with pins. And see what he's going to do to make, make the wealthy suffer. No. <laughs> Yeah, come on. You have to. There has to be a point to where, like, uh, right, exploration has to happen. They have to start talking. Thank you, sir. Cool. And then finally, maybe make them poor. Thank you. Thank you. No, you gotta give them advertising. Thank you. Uh, Here's for the coffee god. Yeah. Yes. Hey, how about a snip of my cup card? Yeah. 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 Thank you. Anybody else? I have a little bit. Just a one. Sorry. But I don't want to get ahead, Ingmar, but the, um, what's happening right now in Syria, as if you're talking about a revolution, we're seeing that unfold, right, in Syria. With, with Come on. Yeah, but it's not a revolution of, I don't know. Well, but that's, in a way, it's irony. It's not a revolution of Platonists. Well, they didn't have good government to begin with. You yeah. might just want to get rid of a bully that controls you, but it doesn't mean you have a good vision of what to do with the power vacuum once it arises. Oh, thank you. Kind of mean thanks. They might, though, but how do you know they don't? Well, I don't know. How many different factions are over there fighting? I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just assuming they don't because of the character of the, the philosophies and the religions of that particular region, mm. you know. I was thinking it was like voter turnout. People don't vote. I was at one of these recent council meetings here in Costa Mesa, and we, they were the vote in Costa Mesa for these assholes we have in, which are pretty much like Perry and uh, Trump and all of those are. And 27% of the people in Costa Mesa turned out to vote. That's not very much. And so we, but during when Obama was running for president, people thought he was the great hope, right? Oh, good, we've got like a Roosevelt man, right? Who's going to turn the country around. Voter turnout, all the young people came out in droves, right? The guy won, and, you know, hands down. Yeah. But now, you know, it's all fizzled out. Guys, good point. Obama's. Uh, yeah, come on. Good, come on, Ash. Just to underline uh, around this point, Obama's been signing every single drone order over the last several years. It has to be approved at the office of the president. Every single one he approves, and he's the only Democrat remaining supporting TPP. TPP How does a guy get into office the as the next great hope on the left and end up acting more like a Republican? How does that happen? No, What's great. TPP? What's TPP? Uh, uh, the the this, this the, we'll get an answer. With the, <coughs> it gives the businesses all, in, in, internationally, it gives them the ability I mean, there are so many. There are so many provisions to this ugly thing, and it's it's been done behind <laughs> closed doors. But one of the biggest is that, that it allows them now legally to sue any government for putting a regulation on them, which limits their profits. Oh God! Go uh, good. Come on, he'll and, answer. And this guy's still defending it. Even Hillary Clinton has has abandoned the TPP. Yeah. Everybody's going. This thing is insane. How does a guy like Obama, who is our <laughs> next great hope? end up like this when in office. We've seen it in multiple, we've seen it in Costa Mesa. Uh, Irvine, Larry Agron started out on the left and ended up making all these deals with uh, developers. How does that happen in office? And the drone thing is surveillance that you're... That uh, you're not just surveillance, but... Uh, killing. Killing. They use them to, uh, to, to, to target Sorry. missiles. In Afghanistan. Okay. okay. I'd rather them... Pakistanis are I like, tell you, I'd rather them... We don't want to go outside anymore, yeah, go outside anymore on, a, on a clear day because... Uh, you know, we're looking up like this. And the political well, Go I'd, ahead. I'd rather them get killed than my brother or sister. I mean, no, not to tell me. I mean it. That's I mean it. time for you yeah, to be more okay. eloquent. Okay. Come on. Right. I'm not saying I don't care. I would like to see a ticking bomb blown up on the street before it gets an opportunity to kill somebody else that didn't deserve to be killed. That's a red herring. There are no ticking bombs. I'm sorry, but there are people in the world of an extremist ideology that want to kill other people because they don't believe what they believe. But we have a government who wants to kill people I, I, without I, I don't, a yeah, process. I don't, I don't do think it. you can talk no. in particular. The There's not one president since 1945. There's not one president since 1945 who has not inherited a football with launch codes, hmm. war, <laughs> the purpose of eliminating enemies to the government, 
Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, no yeah. matter who yeah. becomes president, the day they walk into that office, they are no longer what they said they are. They are uh, 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 an agent of a uh, world gone mad. And they have this, so we, we can't, I mean, minor things like trade and stuff like that, but every president will sign drone. Every president will sign, um, uh, will carry a football with the, the launch oh. code. So well, there's 140 like, people being detained in Guantanamo that are being co have their rights completely ignored. There's 200,000 people ignored. a month coming across just from Syria. Most are drowning. I mean, it's it's a tough world, but we got to stay in principles to have this discussion. I think I don't think you can. I don't think you can get into particulars. I'm sorry to say. Go ahead. He'll answer. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I want to hear it, Dave. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, please continue. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. You have, no, no. To, you have to come on and go. Well, I think that David should elaborate what he means. Like, he wants us not to pay attention to particular issues and stick with principles. <laughs> How will that advance our um, question? Um, I don't know. I just know what we're stuck with. And uh, as far as solutions, um, if we can find out how to uh, engage a population that wants to be governed in the process of governing, that I think would be a worthwhile <coughs> get work. Wow. But other than that, um, uh, we need to talk about higher principles. Let's just get started. It's your chance. There's no solution, right? Because they don't want to. So. Look here. We're trying to give you the experience so you can go back on the web and yeah. get in there and flash <laughs> along insights. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see what it is. He's got a web. See, you know what's interesting? We were, we were up there <clears throat> in Arizona, <clears throat> and Nancy said, Pierre, time to go to a movie. I'm on this trip. <laughs> so I said, all right. So she picked one. And uh, it was too late. So we went to this other one. And I was amazed at it. Truth. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering if you were thinking about that. Yeah. Right. The truth. Yeah. Which is, go ahead. Well, I, I'm not sure about the, it's the story of how Dan Rather came, I, I think you could explain it better. Go ahead, uh, I, d I don't. I, maybe, Steve, could you? Well, Dan Rather um, uh, exposed some lie that was being told. It was very much like Watergate involving politicians. I think it's the debunking of the um, engage of Bush's involvement in, in his military yeah, career. that's it. The the the, mm. the 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 unfolding of, of oh, how Bush right. uh, maintained the integrity of his command uh -huh. and whether he did or not, Sorry, in my own words. Know, when you say command, you mean he had a job. He was a the major general. Of his I mean, a, a, duties as the National Guard. Right? Flying one of those things. He had a command. Yeah. No. Mission accomplished. So, like, this is a <clears throat> a beautiful example of freedom. But the point was is that Dan Rather didn't get the backing of CBS, and in fact they turned against him, unlike, uh, unlike the Watergate guys, the Watergate reporters, um, did get the backing, and Woodward and Bernstein were able to bring down Nixon. But why do you need backing of anyone if your goal is journalistic truth? If you can expose a candidate running for office, and you discover that his background is fraudulent. And as a matter of fact, he, he was able to manipulate because of his power and his family's <coughs> power, military service. Even though he was a recognized pilot, qualified, he sneaked out, cheated. They couldn't bring that story to the forefront. You know, one of Why? the things, people Why? don't care because of, of the people immense power, the immense power <laughs> of wealth and and people, though, yeah. right? Like they don't uh, care. They're, they're, are of they paper people or are they pawns of wealth? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Both mountains of evidence didn't make yeah. the mountains of evidence didn't make as much difference as one 
fraudulent piece of paper because the, there was a, a document that was forged and that that apparently made all the difference. See, the thing about that was that, that the crimes, the, the frauds that Nixon perpetrated were while he was in office, right? Not 20 years ago, before he holds political office. Right? Like, that, that's what brought him down. <clears throat> that's what made it su such a more, I can't, we can't ignore that this is wrong <laughs> if it's happening in our White House. Um, yeah, but it's it's the moral of the film that our society is so structured that if you're trying to tell a fundamental truth about a candidate that will disclose the nature of his personality is flawed. Fraud. Flawed, yeah. That that information should not be made accessible if, it, if in any way it cha challenges and compromises the wealth of this or that wealthy, very f wealthy family. Hmm. That's all. That's where media is gone. That's what media has become, a pawn of the rich. If that's the case, then wealth again. Extreme wealth is a potential enemy of democracy and freedom. Mm -hmm. Well then, what are you going to do? Are you going to limit the amount of money people can have? Yes. Are you going to be a gyrant? Yeah. Socialist? Uh, so, so, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's, what would happen if we said, what would happen if we said, I mean, I just, I got to throw this in. I found out from two independent sources in the last week that the Rothschild family alone controls somewhere between 500 and 700 trillion no. dollars no. in assets. No. Everybody that I talked to went, no, and you look it up, and it, it's, a, it's all estimated, but it's somewhere in that. Now, now, this does not include their debt. Because they own so many banks, they're... Their net is in the hundreds of billions, but what I'm talking about is the assets they control are between 500 and 700 trillion. And that's estimated to be what percentage of the planet's assets is that? It's over half. Hmm. I'll get you an answer. It controls over <laughs> half of the assets on the planet. That's and you never hear about them in the news. They're, they're throwing all the levers in the background, like newspapers they control. That's why they never get written up in the news. Would, they, would you yeah, consider that a ticking bomb, that, na that family? I don't know. That, that they have that much power not, to, 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 not brown, to control and destroy age, or no. cause uh, to control that many people arbitrarily? Just like you said, a man with a Kalashnikov in the desert, or in Texas, or in the France, Charlie Hebdo. I don't want to mention any names because <laughs> God knows who's listening. But um, uh, <laughs> the, um, that they, they are in the same position as that that other enemy, the the, the individual with the imported Kalashnikov and the stolen Chevy truck from Texas, and yeah. he's driving around in the desert shooting and destroying. A, um, a, a cultural legacy. Yeah, you want to see him destroyed. What he has that power. What about the other person? The person who has a half half the, the wealth of the world. One person. They have that same kind of power. Well, I don't. I mean, in what respect? I guess, I mean, I guess it would be supporting supporting how it, you perceive yeah. the end to which that individual is going to use that power. I mean, I don't like it that they would use their wealth to support an unjust order that is harsher on the poor and increasingly so mm -hmm. but I think it's still different than it's still different than the guy the Kalishnikov guy who's you're, act, you're also, actively you're also bringing afraid. down 2,000 years 3,000 3, years of history and killing people right in the moment yeah but bringing down what's left of present humanity isn't much different well perhaps it's a bigger problem you're saying so I and I and I'm very I see you're cautious too because somebody might be listening. <laughs> well, is it? Not at all. You know, I'm, I remember that film on healthcare systems and I, Michael. What's his face? Anyway, Moore. Michael uh, Moore. Michael Moore's, and it, in it was the story of this uh, man who couldn't get cancer treatment at all because he couldn't he didn't have health benefits in the United States and he died. Yeah, yeah. And apparently it was the kind of situation where had he been able to. He wouldn't have died had right. he been able to get or yeah. much better chance. So in a way, isn't that kind of a slow ticking bomb? Oh sure, He's sure. Killed, they're killing off hundreds of thousands of people, maybe even millions, no. through 
lack of food, lack of water, lack of, you know, yeah, many yeah. things, and cutting off their potential in terms of no education and, and other matters. So it seems to me that's very destructive, even though it's invisible, you know, it's, like the Rothschilds. Because it's invisible, it's so much harder to deal with and oh, get yeah. people to, to rally against yeah. it. Well, to me, it's always been when people confront the rich and the powerful, do, does change occur? It's not when you confront the poor, the dispossessed, the guy running around with the Kalashnikov, because he's he's a terrorist. He doesn't have an army. He doesn't have, you know, fighter jets and all that. I mean, I think people are misdirected when they go after the poor and the powerless. Like Donald Trump is going after the very bottom people on the rung of the social ladder, the immigrants. You know, I mean, change takes place when you go after the people on the top. The <laughs> guillotine. Yes. Yeah, but now, I mean, things are so, yeah. Well, what, what would happen if, if by chance, I mean, just, you know, I'm trying to get a little bit back to principles again, I guess, to move up. What would happen if by chance, as a society, enough people got together and said, we're going to limit wealth. Now, uh, pick a number. 1 million, 3 million, 10 million, somewhere in that neighborhood, that's the max you can have, or that's the max that you can... Uh, or inact, that's the max inactive wealth you can have. Something like that. Yeah, or, or you know, and there's this whole question about taxing on inheritance now. You know, what if you <clears> said <throat> you can give each of your kids a maximum of, say, 5 million bucks each? That's enough for them to live the rest of their lives, reasonably, five, right? About 5 bucks. Okay? No, but, you know, they want to give them something. Okay, fine. But you can't give them 100 million or a billion. You can't that all has to go back to the community. What if we said that? What if we just said, there has to be some reasonable limit on wealth and what you can inherit for wealth. Would that it, in itself begin to open up the opportunity for conversation? No, it they would be opposed immediately. There's already people saying things like that. No, but suppose they, they anybody that says that is a socialist, my friend, well, and they're trying to overturn our freedom more, and our democracy. Right. Well, that's becoming a more and more popular word again. But uh, the problem it's powerful. Is, 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 is that it didn't have a. Where is where is yeah. a what you're saying is anti-American, Jeff. Well, the most of the world is, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, suppose just theoretically for a moment that we manage to accomplish this as a world society. We manage to say, look, the most you can have is 10 million. After that, it's 100 percent tax. You got to give the rest back. So who would go? For if we system? did manage to accomplish that, you could that say it all race, you want. Would that have an effect on conversation? Of course, that's easy. So perhaps. So I'm, I guess I'm throwing. The, if if there's no objections to that, I'm throwing that out as a possible goal. Let's make that our goal as a human race, a, a limitation to human, to individual wealth. Just as a starting point, it doesn't you know, get us to the top, but just as a starting point. See, the, pro the problem with that is that the 40% we've been talking about are viciously opposed to any that. idea that even smells like what you're talking about. Viciously, right? Like, like, it, like if it started getting traction, they'd start killing people because they do have the money to hire such people that could do those things. We've had, hey, listen, we've had we've had uh, revolutions before. The, the French had to take out their aristocracy to have yeah. the society they have today. It's, yeah. it's uh, been done. And because of this tension, the yeah. Romans had a 130-year period of civil war that ushered in a tyrant. Hey, it, may not be, <coughs> it may not be pretty for a little bit, but uh, uh, do you want another 100, 200 years of increasing wealth and TPP? You know, they're just moving forward every week with more legislation while we're asleep. Do you want to keep to continue that, or do you want to put in 20, 30 years of ugly civil war to get to the other side? Oh, I'd love to fantasize with my buddy Jeff here about fighting in a civil war like yeah, that. And, but to, to actually do that is a different thing. I was going to avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it sounds romantic. Hey, you know, I finally get to try out my virtues in actual combat. But... Um, I don't know. Well, we had a civil war, and we've also tried that with uh, socialism, and uh, you know, it creates a economy so that doesn't go anywhere. Uh, you know, people don't get wealthy in a. In I'm, a, not, a I'm state not advocating like that. for socialism. <laughs> I'm, I'm leaving that all open to discussion. I'm just saying that individual wealth has a limit. You can keep the exact same system you have now, for-profit corporations, corporations that aren't even owned by their employees. 
but you have to limit well. After three million or 10 million, you name the, the, the limit, it's, the rest of it's gotta go back. Because you have enough to buy yourself a yacht or a beautiful well, house in Newport, you have enough. After I, that, I think I heard, house is I, heard uh, that. I think I heard Dave saying that we need to uh, expand our participation in the in the in our governance or our our economy. You know, a democracy a, a democratization will solve a lot of problems automatically. What with and and that's that's a that's a good idea. I mean, I I I think you know. Opening up, you know, different forms of uh, corporations, for example, you know, where you, where profit motive isn't the main goal, and and uh, you know, different organizations, you know, that's uh, there's. Come on, what do you think of this? We need to organize on a different principle right. besides I, money. I think what 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 uh, I think what what Robin is saying is true. That, Which uh, is well, that democratization, that there that a more popular involvement in good causes is a path for us to improve our political situation. But how can you get more popular right? like, in good Like causes? this Trump and Carson phenomenon. Well, you've got the Rothschilds controlling half the, the world's wealth. How can you get that popular involvement anymore? We just need a phone number. I'll talk to them. Hey, Rothschild. <laughs> when the entire Leaders, system is Leaders, people with good ideas, standing up and running for office. You know, and, and, and inspiring people. Look at what Obama did with his ability to speak. You know, the revolutions happen that way. I mean, I, I, I believe in that. I think, I think that, as I was going to say, that the Trump and Carson phenomena shows that people who have little to no experience politically can, can, can change things in ways that we don't expect, didn't expect, couldn't predict. Um, so I see a positivity there. Go ahead. I'm going to make a proposal and then, I'm, but I'm first going to make a few comments. I have no confidence in either Ben Carlson or Bernie Sanders becoming president and getting the launch codes and making decisions about who to blow up and who not in this current crisis we have. Neither of them. But uh, I think that we should no longer have elections in which we elect people. There should only be elections in which ideas are put up. And for no people at all, no only the world. concepts what themselves, and then have no, and then find the people of pro If we decide to vote in a tyranny, then goddamn it, we'll find. There are plenty of guys out there who can do the job, but that we we can no longer put it in a person because the person becomes uh, only a part of the, of the idea, the part that needs to be the seductive part. But if the whole idea were present, um, and we only elected principles, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well, on. see, uh, we're dealing with that republic issue, right? That uh, what you're saying is a dream. How do, can you practically apply it, right? Anyways, I didn't really think that it was going to go very far. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, the ideas already are elected. You get a oligarch supporter number one or oligarch supporter number two, and they all. True. support the same system regardless of whatever they but said if they or were did saying before to get to We're going to gonna only vote for people who, uh, we're only going to vote for money and power as a voice, or we're going to find another way to vote for um, honor and the greatest good, or are we going to uh, vote for each person to fend for themselves, to quote democracy, um, are we going to... You know, something like that, and give that choice to people. It would take a little bit of education, of course, because there's 40 percent of the people who don't even pay attention. But um, I would dare anybody who, who, with any, I don't know. It just seems like. Don't say you don't see, know. Keep going. <laughs> do we want to free the world? Do we want every human being to have the freedom to? to have a goal, a meaningful goal, and feed them and take care of them, or do, uh, my, my feeling is we don't free the world, we free the earth. We wipe it clean of all humanity and give it a chance. Including the people here? Including the people here, God damn it. Yeah, some, some people got to lay it down. And in 50,000 years after another ice age, which I think will not be an ice age. No, no, he's your oldest friend. He's your oldest friend.
<laughs> Blow everyone off. Free the earth. Sounds free great. The free the earth. That's my new. You like the wick? Uh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get rid of humans. I, 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 I'd be first in line. New plants. So now let's start I'm sorry. Uh, I, I That's just, it. We got such. We got that place. We'll start drinking. David, um, I like. I like where you were going to. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the new prime minister at, uh, in Canada, the he, uh, Trudeau, the libertarian, I think, huh? Trudeau. Trudeau, yes. Uh, so he started to put all the people in the community that represent each section, like the Aborigines and refugees, in his cabinet Average. to include them to represent the voice of the people in the country. Uh, and, and I thought, you know, that's such a good example and a good model as, as a leader mm -hmm. for a country. Yes. Or I don't know. He's still supporting the bike line. With people. <laughs> people. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. still yeah. supporting yeah. the bike line. He did, but you know what? Damn, I'm wondering hard. when he was disappointed with Obama, it was in a way to, to say thank you, but, you know, like to... Without saying it himself. Okay. Yes. I'm, that's how I'm reading theory. into it. I don't think the... The liberals are going to win in this country necessarily. I don't. I think Obama's been kind of a disappointment to most people, and and I think they, it's not a it's it's not far fetched to think that the Republicans are going to are going to win. Come on, it's not far -fetched they're not going to win. I'm, and then look who they Hillary's have. not going to lose. What? Hillary Clinton is not going to lose. Well, she may not even be alive. <clears throat> you know what? If you look at Hillary. Clinton's statements in the past, you have to say one thing. She sure can change her, her positions. Well. <laughs> and that's a good test of a candidate. Yeah. Right? That they change their positions oh, over time. Yeah. Right? Or is it? No. It's a bad, it's a test that we don't want that person in office because who knows what they well, do. What does it say about our society that I can still can't I know, she's believe gonna wage Donald war. Trump That's is what an do. actual I candidate? Like I, I, I can't even, I can't even <laughs> process that this guy is for real. Like, and he has a chance. In our society, it, it blows my mind. Then you don't understand the forty percent. It blows my mind. Yeah. Trump, Trump is now the leading, yeah. as has polled the leading of candidate among all the Republicans. Carson. Carson. Just Carson. 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 All right. That means we finally reached the point in our political process where if you have enough money, you can buy government. Even if you're a buffoon. And that's worthwhile to think of. Because what else should you do with your money than to buy a government? Well, I mean, you know, you might. I think it's more. It's a, it's a, it's a, a man's right to have wealth, and he has the right to buy whatever he can. And you can buy people, and therefore you can buy a government. What's wrong with that? That's freedom, isn't it? It just shows how low we've become. Like, even his appearance and how he functions, like, that. It's just, it's absurd. Yeah, absurd. He has nice hair. To whom? <laughs> to me? Fire. But all the communication. No, no. But look, his popularity came out because he called Mexicans rapists and murderers. That's why he became popular. Yeah. Because people are into that kind of speech. The 40%. Yeah. They like it. They like, they dig it. I mean, that was like the most alarming thing you could have. And all of a sudden, the next day, the polls you know, were all Trumps. You know, the argument, the argument that's now current is that we are the most, you know, we are very educated. All of our people go to schools. Therefore, it's the failure of our education if we generate irrational people. Are you a teacher? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I mean, how is it that our schools produce irrational people? Well, well, we have because we're it's, not allowed to put rationality in the because we don't know how to produce rational people. Yep. No, and we're not allowed to. Right? We don't know how to, and if we knew how to, we wouldn't be allowed to. Yeah. Look, well, if reason, look, if reason look, is like divine. this, this. Uh, Hostility against Islamic fundamentalists. It's very foolish. I mean, they're merely doing what the Catholic Church did during the Inquisition. Yep. <laughs> right? Yep. And if the Catholic Church has the right to destroy cultures and people, why shouldn't Islam? Why indeed? Yeah. Why not indeed? Right? Fair is fair. Yeah, under the 
Ferris <laughs> Bueller. Right? Out of money destroys no. cultures. <laughs> they have a right to destroy. Everybody has a right to destroy what they love. <laughs> Don't they? That's the ultimate freedom. Neil, that's right? Isn't that great? Islamic Un nihilism. Unquestioningly. Without, without any challenge. With unquestioningly. Yeah. Yeah, people have a right to destroy what they love. Now give them that right. That's freedom. I, I would like to think you're being facetious. Right. God damn it. And there's I meaningful business we put aside. <laughs> you know why? Mm -hmm. How many meaningful goals are profitable? Uh, none. <laughs> Therefore, <laughs> you have a society of broke, meaningful people. Well, let's do that. Yeah, yeah how beautiful. What's going to support them? <laughs> Only things don't cost anything. Yeah, say, does the socialist system support meaningful work? What society, in your view, supports meaningful work? I'm the wrong person to ask. Uh, you have no, well society? then ask someone who's got a say, website would, say, and has an interest in these questions. I would, I would, I would say it's where... where no. No. Yeah, th th thank you, that's the answer I was going to get. The noetic society. <laughs> where, where, where uh, I guess, in all of history, where did uh, the most meaning emerge? And how did that ha take place? Florence, Italy. Yeah. The, the Flor Florentine Renaissance. And then what block? The, the High Renaissance. You know what it needed? Money. A very wealthy family called the Medici. Yeah. Right? Without which it would never city. have survived. It couldn't be looked at with too much scrutiny. And it nearly, by the way, it was said only to have lasted 70, 80 years. Yeah. Then came the Counter Reformation. Uh, so it's a delicate flower that doesn't last anyhow, so why fool around with the gardens of society? I know, I should have stayed at home. All they do is grow weeds. <laughs> but it, I mean, it, it, it really matters though, right? Like the Medici, the, the Medici's were bankers, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, they're wealthy. Uh, so Therefore? The influence of ideas is really important, right? Because you can get the wealthy to change. The trouble is, you idealize. see, the Middle Age, the de Medici's. We don't have a de Medici's in our culture. Right? They're all they're all <laughs> grabbing more and more wealth, and they don't have enough time because they back the most foolish of all possible candidates. Irrational. <coughs> well, that's why we got to get Brad to turn billionaire. Oh, all right. <laughs> I've been trying, Gates. It's not working. <laughs> see, the air. Hey, my, uh, my brother's uh, wedding, so his wife's half, uh, her family's half Persian, you know, there's a whole Persian side, and they used to be uh, in with the Shah before that all went south, so naturally they're quite not happy with the current status of Iran because they used to be that high class and ran it all. Well, at the uh, at their wedding, you know, I meet them all, you know, because I'm on the thing, so they know my name pretty easily only one brother and uh, they asked me what I was into I told them I'm a philosopher but that's not what I do for a living because I don't know how and they're like that's too bad back in old Persia we would have uh, we'd have set you up you know given you your own library and all that and all you'd have to do is write a book and credit it to our family I'm like <laughs> I would have said sure how in a you, second they like miss that? and they uh, they criticized our society for that for how not a uh, for not what for not being into Philosophy and the arts, like they had a de Medici kind of attitude. Like, well, you could not tell that them. they were gonna do I'll it so much. But <laughs> they don't have that kind of power anymore. They got oh. thrown out. They live here well, now. They, but they might else. have money. And that would do as well with power. Though. No money. Yeah. They, they, uh, <laughs> no, they went from that high elite status to. Yeah, yeah, I know about this, the revolution against the Shah. No, I'm just what saying, happens? but those folks here are not that rich anymore. Oh, I got you. I got you. But I, Sorry for I, I did understand that they had been at the... Uh, you know, well, you know, Thomas Taylor dedicated some of his works to... Go ahead, go ahead, tell him. Well, I just, I mean, I, I just want to return to the idea of solution. I don't think there really is a solution aside from becoming the best philosophers that we can personally become. Because that matters. That changes people. <clears throat> Could you say that in, in more... Just add to it, come on. Well, I think that... You know, people like those assembled need to do philosophy on the highest possible level, and that will that will that will change things. 
That will help people. That will convert it to Medici, mm -hmm. uh, a banker, uh, someone wealthy. We don't want to refuse you. If anything. But we're going to. Oh. You know, like I remember the days when Bruce McGurn, you know, was supporting philosophical midwifery and what you do. You know, a wealthy man turned his head towards something that looked like it offered something different than what society is offering us. <clears throat> well, uh, there's my solution. What are you going to get there? I would, I would, I would say that <clears throat> uh, the forces of irrationality all over the place are on the ascent. And you're going to have to, someone is going to have to say, how can we understand this? Like there are more Planned Parenthood organizations and units and buildings that have been burned down in the last two years. Right. Planned Parenthood. They burn down their buildings right now with impunity. They're terrorists. No one wants to say fundamental Christians are, are terrorists. Anarchists. The problem of terrorism is literalism. How are you going to deal with it? Everywhere. Big mo movement in China. Right? There's a whole movement where P Chinese are now reverting to their own language to express their hostility against the functioning government with slogans. And many people are upset, but you know what? <laughs> is the course of is the course of history the rise of irrationality in the face of the destruction of humanity? Hey, Islamics, they're going to have an atomic bomb. They have. Pakistan already has them. They've defended terrorists. Israel has bombs, won't tell they do. North, Car North Korea has them. Israel they're terrorist organizations. The Palestinians. Right. Is having a bumper sticker... So what is, the, what is the real issue? The real issue is... <laughs> What is the rise of irrationality in the face of the imminent destruction of mankind? And how can you reverse it? You have to understand it. And now we have Trump, probably one of the most irrational dudes in modern politics. But that's not true. He's not more irrational than Bush was. Or Ronald Reagan. Right, right. However, he seems to give a voice I, to the... I have some friends, you may not believe this, Barbara, but I have some friends who made a analysis, a psychoanalysis of Reagan and showed <laughs> by their testing that the gentleman was unqualified for high offices because he had cognitive impairment. I know of those very people. And you know what? There might be one present with us. When that, when that information was published two years after the election, the congressman who reviewed the material said, there's nothing wrong with that. If we were to apply that to Congress, 50% of us would have to be out of office. So therefore, they knew they could reject it. That's right. Is that true? It was in the New York, right, it was in the LA Times. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. <clears throat> so it's not enough to show that your candidates are irrational. Matter of fact, that makes them popular, since most of mankind is irrational. They want someone like themselves to rule. Isn't that nice? Yeah. No. They're not, they're, Pierre, if we said 40%, it's probably 28%. How many? Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio and Trump and Carson are not going to get elected president. You know what? It's not going to happen. Their irrationality will be rejected. Your idea is very interesting. You know, uh, I don't know if you know about the problem with the park at the end of the street. They want to make it a bunch of baseball fields. 
And, I, and we were walking down the day we were walking down the street, and there's a guy outside of his house, and he said, well, we said, uh, well, it's a nice park down there. He said, oh, I really like that park. And I said, well, they're going to make it into a bunch of baseball fields and stuff. And he just says, oh, they wouldn't do that. <laughs> that's the great statement. That's let's not be so clear about this. No, no, no. That's what they said when they got Adolf in. Yeah, yeah, right. That's right. Right, and Stalin and every other tyrant. No, that's fine. That's fine. But we do live in a post-eight-year G.W. Bush era. I'm saying that's the difference. That's why those guys aren't going to get in because we know now what it's like to elect a guy like Bush. Recent. This is recent history. No, we don't. I, I, and, I mean, Rubio, Rubio, look, Rubio and Ted Cruz are worse than Bush. The same stupid people who, or let's say, yeah. the forty percent who elected Bush the are the people. same yeah. forty elect that, that think that Obama is terrible and should never have been elected just because he's black, and they're going to vote. They could vote some moron in. You can't sit back and assume they're going to understand that those idiots are idiots. What do you I don't do about think. That anymore? I just don't. What are you going to do? With the political... What do you need to worry I about? Think, I, I was... With the presidential election, and Pierre's pointed this out, and I've observed it true, yeah. there are seven counties in Florida and Pennsylvania, yeah. and those are the only places that are going to determine the election. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll... No, no. It, it, the final, it was whether or not Pennsylvania went for Bush and whether Florida went for Bush. And those two were the only reasons Bush got elected because everything else is already settled. We already know the reds and the blues. Well, I wish I had the actual numbers, but I'm wondering about the demographics and how much people like Obama... I mean, if you, I don't know if you guys watched the first Democratic debate, but Clinton and, uh, and Sanders... I mean, if you s compare the, the Republican debates versus the Democrat, I think the idea of cool in society is on the rise. In comparison with what the like other hip? side is offering, you mean like hip? No, I mean I mean being cool, okay. like cool headed, cool headed, exactly. The most cool headed. So, for example, is... Hillary Clinton, Clinton keeping her cool during eleven hours of testimony that she had to do before Congress. I think the most <coughs> rational, cool headed, uh, calm speaker we have in the United States today is Obama. Yeah. He manages to make, take the high road and is clear in what he intends. And the fact that he cut down that Keystone Pipeline is a yes. major yes. gift to Huge. the American people. Huge. Because the Keystone Pipeline was a disaster. Between yeah. Canada and the rest of the world, America was nothing more than a gutter through which they were going to run exactly. that thing. And there was going to be no benefit for America. Exactly. In the well, Keystone oil Pipeline. prices are low now. That um, killed But uh, yeah. uh, somebody who would do that, oh, I think. Also, also, the economy, I mean, look at gas prices, the unemployment is down. I mean, it, there appears to be, if you elect a Democrat, your economy is going to be... Take care, Steve. At least, I mean, I, don't, I know that Pierre is always predicting economic disaster around the corner, but everything seems to be a lot better economically in our country now because of seven years of a Democrat being in the, in the White House. David, I, you know, I hate to get it. I'm sorry. I'm arguing particulars. I said I wouldn't do it. I'm out. I'm going to go Brad, back. Brad looks like Brad disagrees. <laughs> See, I think the, the, the problem in a democracy is if you really have a candidate, let's it's assume for the saying. moment, let's assume for the moment that Sanders, Bernie Sanders, understands the political process and has a beautiful and meaningful program. All right, let's assume that. Why is it in a democracy he'll never get elected? That right, a certain segment of the population will back him. The S word. Socialist. Socialist. Right. But that, that segment of the population is only a certain small percentage of the whole. And therefore, a democracy will always choose the lesser of two evils. And they fear the evil of a, of a true candidate. They're afraid to change. I'm sorry, can you make the point again? Democracy is afraid to change, yeah. meaningful change. Yeah. Is that true or false? Well, I... Uh, How could you measure it? Well, could you make your point again? Uh, why is it that they wouldn't elect Sanders? No, no, I'm raising that as a question, right? 
Is it not likely that if there is a candidate that is ideal, let's make believe Bernie Sanders is that person? Well, he's the candidate that most reminds me of What are the chances in a democracy of he becoming elected? Yeah, not very much. Not he's, very much. he's being pulled like out right now. He's not going to get elected, it looks like. Then there's something fundamental about democracy that's fundamentally at wrong. It cannot recognize and vote in ideal candidates to make the kinds of changes necessary for society to flourish, period. And that's because... What if that's you, true. What reason did Wait a minute, was that true? Has that been true? Yes. If we look back at all of our political history. So you're saying, I, I understood you to say that... Did FDR, was he a fool? We're a fader. Pierre, you said it was because American or people are afraid of change, is that correct? But um, why wouldn't that hold equal? Well, I guess I'm wondering then, are you saying they can perceive that it would be a change for the better? And it's that fear that it might not be a change for the better? Or any change? any perceived change well, they would be afraid of. I'm just not clear yeah, on that's how quite, that would function. That's quite true. What, what, what got FDR elected? Things were so bad that he came in and said, I can, I can bring about a change. <coughs> and people were saying, things are so terrible, we'll risk it. Yeah. It's never been that bad since then. So you're saying that's what we'll, yeah, that's it will need to get that bad before people will be willing to risk? Yeah. Well, I heard him say that we always vote for the lesser of two evils. That's what he right. right. And, and so I think that's, that's, a, that's a very true statement. But yeah, if so it's the independence. how do those connect together? Yes, like, that's a good question. How do those connect together that people always will vote for the lesser of two evils? How does that, is well, it that? And the, it, when that is not the case, when the conditions for change are not current, then people always make the choice between the lesser of evils. Mm -hmm. So is the idea that to vote for it, well, it seems like it could also work like to vote for a change is a fearsome thing. And therefore, a less fearsome thing would be to vote for um, the situation continuing, mm -hmm. whatever. What is it called? Situation, the normal. Status quo. The status quo, thank you. I needed that. <laughs> is that. Is that also what would happen? Like instead of going for change, which might bring us to better, but would be fearsome, af we are afraid of that, they'll go for something that maintains the status quo and therefore is a safe bet. And is. Or so only changes people, within the status quo. Only changes within the status quo. So the greater evil would be the fearsome change for the better, or what might be the better. Hmm. Like if we face an economic turndown of major consequences, Bernie is going to be president. Hmm. time. Interesting. <laughs> But another thing is, Bernie has an implementation <laughs> issue. Well, like, he can't, he can't, an, he can't answer how he would take on the rich. He's, he's basically, he's saying, we need to get people organized. We got to, we got to get a groundswell. It's got, to, it's got to come from the grassroots in order to make it happen. Yeah. But that's, that's but not clear. Grassroots do not wake up unless there's a tragedy. Hmm. They're not woken up now. I guess what I'm saying is, I think I think he could get more traction if he were to be more specific about how he could bring, change the system. I, I think one of the one of the interesting things about advertising and and communication mm. is that if you want to get across an idea, don't educate the public. Rather. It's just a general principle. Right. What would you do instead? If you want to, if you want to bring about a change, do not try to educate people, because they are going to then have to think. 
about whether this new principle is feasible or not. Only a certain number of people are going to go through that effort to reason along that line. But if you can arouse their fear and uncertainty about something, that's a good way to communicate, and they'll respond to that. So, Bernie Saunders, he's going to try to educate people. It's a waste of time. He'll lose. Why? Because to educate people means the counter-arguments are going to be pervasive. They're going to be going for what they fear. Hmm. Republicans have it. Fear. People will get out fear. Unless things get so bad that they're going to... See, someone has to say to themselves, what is wrong? Are we facing extinction or not? That's the only question. And if so, someone has to say, please make an analysis and tell us what the hell is going on such that the human race may become extinct. Where are the forces driving humankind to extinction? How are we going to overcome it? You have to deal with those forces, period. That's the only political issue. Mm. Are, there ground, hey, are there grounds sufficient to say that human race may become extinct? Absolutely. Are there a number of people, notable people, who can lay out a platform and saying, if we continue the way we're going, blah, 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 blah. Sooner rather than later. Then someone equally has to say, then what brought those conditions about? Can we live without those things? And they have to be clear. Mm -hmm. Well, FDR showed us we can't. We, can't live, with, we can't live without uh, some sort of uh, stability that's a, and economic. Th hey, that's the issue. Can we live without fear? That's right. But you, they had, everybody had the fear because they're already in the same problem. Right? That they could, uh, this could happen. But if we're all facing the fear of extinction, and we know it, or we see it, now it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you have a common subject, you have to face your fear. It's imminent. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. And climate change is getting a lot more traction now, now, right? You think it's true that only drowning people are rational? <laughs> <laughs> Huh? So they'll give up. They'll give up whatever it is yes. <laughs> and grasp for life. If that's the human race, that's what we're going to face because that's the only thing that's going to wake up mankind. The forty percent. Visual fear. The lower west. So therefore, would you not agree we should join forces and have speed it up? <laughs> <laughs> then we have to look to the lower west side of Manhattan, which at one time used to be the meatpacking district, but now um, is where all the most rich and influential people are moving their houses. Oh, that was the district that flooded in New York during Sandy. So we're looking forward to the, because as soon as the global warming really takes over, the most powerful people in New York City are going to become rational and it'll stop. I'm kidding. I'm just making up a still. Hire a guy like me to just build some stilts and put their house higher. No, they're all made out of brick. They'll build out of something new. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank goodness we have a rock that we can hide under while the storm of society blows over us, Pierre. Hey. That's um. why I live on a hill here, so you're all welcome. And I want to remind you all that when the shit hits the fan, and I'm speaking most literally right now, the thing you're going to miss most is fresh toilet paper, of which I have a sufficient supply for many, many months to come. <laughs> but you don't have an underground bunker. All right. <laughs> ah, time for Paris, nice to see you in the neighborhood. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. How long are you going to be here? I don't know.
Um, Come on. I don't know. Hey, I live in. I live with a family that it is impossible to predict. Uh, Pierre, would uh, I'm going to be out of town tomorrow? But would you appreciate uh, joining us for yeah. a, a par minute yeah. on Monday? Sure. Okay. Monday. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow's yeah. out. I've already made. Yeah. Not tomorrow, but Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sitting at six here. Yeah. Everybody. Great. Coffee Monday? at seven. Monday. Yeah. Great.